Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to take some pictures of birds and review this, the Sigma 600mm mirror lens. And this is a fairly old lens, actually. It's for an FD mount here, but I've got it adapted to my Nikon Z6. And one of the nice things about using this lens with this camera is that uh, this, cam this camera has in-body image stabilization. Now, I've got it mounted on a tripod right now because I'm going to be filming some video. That's really necessary for video, but with the built-in image stabilization of the Z6, I'm really able to use this lens for handheld photography as well, which is something you really couldn't normally do. But today we're going to be doing a lot of video work for, for this video, and because I just like doing video, or, you know, taking slow motion video of birds. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit more about this lens, and we're going to go get, hopefully get some cool pictures here of, I don't know what, there's chickadees about, maybe a few nut hatches, blackbirds of course. Anyway, it's gonna be fun. Let's go. So as you can see, it's starting to rain and I'd better head inside. But just really quick, I wanted to talk about the build quality of this lens. Now, as you can see, it's made entirely of metal. Like the metal, even the lens hood is metal and it just feels really solid. I've I actually dropped this thing by accident when one of our one of when I was filming out there in the sheep pen, one of them bumped into me, sent the sent, sent my camera flying. No damage at all, not not a not a scratch. It's perfectly fine and the lens is lens this lens is tough. And um, the focus ring is really well damped. Uh, it's very, turns very smoothly and accurately, so it's easy to get uh, accurate focus of distance. Now, my problem with this it, with this lens, that with that is, that it also takes a long time to turn it all the way around from close focusing to far focusing. So you don't really get that ability to focus on something way far out there and then quickly pull back like you would with a good autofocus system or a focus by wire system. This is more of a, uh, for getting accurate, uh, um, accurate focus, which is really, we really need that with such a long manual lens like this. And um, I've, so it pays to so, sort of have an idea of where your subject is going to be and think ahead with where your focus is on that. Anyway, Love that. Love actually, really, imp actually, there's a lot of things I love about this lens. We'll talk about image quality after this rain stops and I can c go in, go and get some more photos of things. But for now, it is really starting to pour. So I'm going to get out of this. So the rain has stopped and we can get back to the review. Now in terms of image quality, this lens is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, now it is an older lens, so you have to give it a bit of a pass for that. Uh, it's I've noticed that it's fairly soft, it suffers from color fringing, it doesn't do well against bright light sources, and it, it uh, of course it has the donut shaped bouquet, the very busy out of focus areas that all mir mirror lenses like this have. Um, it's just a, it's just a, um, inherent part of the design that is unfortunately unavoidable and those uh, results can be very off-putting um, to some people. Uh, if it's if it's not to your taste and this lens really probably isn't for you but if you can put up with the busy backgrounds and some of the other visual defects this lens is very affordable. It's only like a hundred dollars on eBay and uh, it's very portable. I mean for uh, a um, 600 millimeter lens this thing is tiny. So, so you're giving up great image qual quality for uh, portability and affordability. And I, I, you know, 
I kind of think for a lot of people that's worth it. This is a pretty decent lens. So, would I recommend this lens? Well, despite its flaws, it is very, very light, and it's very portable. And especially, it is very cheap. If you're just starting out with a mirrorless camera with built-in image stabilization, you can pick this up for just like a hundred bucks, and if you're not, you're not down hardly any money, and you can play around with a super telephoto lens. And I, I think for a lot of people, that would be great. For it, it allows you to get pictures, really nice pictures of wildlife, as long as it's not like fast-moving birds in flight or anything like that. And it can deliver great images, so long as you're willing to put up with them being slightly soft and with its uh, visual quirks, is what I would call them. So, yeah, I would actually recommend this lens. It's, it's, if nothing else, it's really cool looking. And, yeah. Uh, you can take a look at one of my other reviews of the, another lens I use and own, at the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, and you know it covers a wider range of focal length. It has great autofocus, built-in image stabilization, and you know it's, it produces wonderful sharp images, and it's absolutely great. And uh, if you really want to invest in something that will get you know, really good wildlife images and can take images of birds in flight and stuff like that. That's the way to go. But it, it will run you close to a thousand dollars at least. So, um, it's a it's quite a bit more of an investment for the, than this thing. Anyway, you can check out my review of that and a lot of other great videos over my channel. Uh, wildlife. I've got drone videos, more gear reviews, a great a lot of great stuff. So go subscribe to that. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all again ne next time. Hopefully that peacock wasn't too loud. <laughs> yeah, again. Bye.